Hello everybody, in this video we're going to talk about how to graph cube root functions. So a cube root function is a radical function with an index of a 3. So that word radical, a lot of times students think of square root, and that's correct, it's a square root symbol, um, but we call it the radical symbol because square root is when we have an index of a 2. And we talked about how to graph square root functions, I'll link that in the cards right now. Um, so in this video we're talking about how to graph a cube root function, so our index is a 3. Okay, so we see our parent function right here. It's just f of x is equal to the cube root of x. And over here on the right side we have a graph and this is what our parent function would look like. So if we think about what are some good x values for us to use, those would be perfect cubes. So now when we look at about taking a perfect cube, we can take the perfect cube of a negative because when we take a perfect cube, we're trying to figure out what number multiplied by itself three times gives us what's under the radicand, all right, what's in the radicand. And so in that case, we can't have a negative because a negative times a negative times a negative is still a negative, okay? Whereas with square root function, we couldn't have a negative. So that's where our domain and range are gonna be different uh, because with a square root function, our domain and range uh, did not include negatives, but in this case, our domain and range um, includes all real numbers for, for cube root functions. So if we wanna fill out this xy table here, we would wanna put in negative eight for x because the cube root of negative eight is negative two, negative one because the cube root of negative one is negative one, zero because the cube root of zero is zero, positive one, cube root of that is one, and positive eight because the cube root of that is two. So these five points are the five points you see on this graph right now. Um, and those are basically the five main points of our cube root function. And remember, just like linear functions, quadratic functions, absolute value, square root, all these different types of functions, they all start with a parent function and they follow some transformations um, if we alter the equation in any way. And those transformations are all the same. So we've looked at that for linear, for quadratic, and for square root. And now let's see how those transformations apply to cube root functions. So here's a couple of examples. And what we have right now on our graph is just that parent function. And we're going to look at what transformation is in our equation and we're going to move our points in our graph according to that transformation. So right here we see this minus four. So that tells me this is going to be a vertical translation, which means we're just going to slide or shift our points four units down. Okay, so I'm just gonna take my five points. So I had one over here at negative eight, negative two. We're gonna go one, two, three, down four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. Okay, so now you see how all, all of our points are just moved four units down. So the shape of our graph should look very similar. That's not good. <laughs> very similar to what our shape looked like at the beginning. However, we just move it down four units, right? So the middle portion of my of my graph there, those three points, that could have been a little bit better, um, but we get the idea, okay? All right, for B, notice how we have this plus three, but now it is under the radical, it's inside the radicand. So now this is going to be a horizontal translation, which means we're gonna move left or right, and it's three units, but remember, horizontal is kind of opposite of what it looks like. So it says plus three, but really we go left three, all right? so. I'm gonna go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then one, two, three, okay? So my point over here at negative eight, uh, negative two, we're not gonna actually see that one, um, but we do have these three points right here, okay? All right, and that's what our new graph would look like. Okay, we moved left three. All right, so now let's do some stretches and shrinks. So our first one we have t of x equals two times the cube root of x. So since this two is being multiplied and it is outside the radical, this is going to be a vertical stretch and it's by a factor of two, okay? So now all this means is we're gonna take our five points and we're going to multiply their y values by two, okay? So if I have my point right here at negative eight, negative two, it's going to move down to negative eight, negative four. My point at negative one, negative one will move down to negative one, negative two. My point at the origin will stay there. One, one will move to one, two, and eight, two will move to eight, four. So see how we just kind of stretched out our graph there? And so once we connect our curve here, all right, let me finish it there, pretty good. All right, we can just see how, you know, that middle portion, we've stretched it out a little bit. Our points at eight and negative eight also been stretched as well, okay? 
All right, now for B, we have h of x equals the cube root of 0 0.5 or 1 half x. So now notice this is on the inside. So this is going to be horizontal. And horizontal stretch and shrink is opposite of what it looks like. So it looks like a fraction, so we might be thinking, oh, that should be a shrink. But in reality, it's opposite of what it looks like. So this is actually a horizontal stretch. And this is also by a factor of two. The reason it's two is because it's actually one over one half. So one divided by one half. So if we keep flip change that, uh, that's gonna be one times two. So our factor is two. So basically what we could think about is if I wanted what's inside the radical to be a perfect cube, I would have to increase the perfect cube by, by, by two, right? By double, because we're taking um, half of it. So for example, my point at the origin would still be there because if I plug in zero for x right here, zero times one half is still zero, right? So the cube root of zero is still zero. But now I would have to plug in two for x to get the cube root of one, right? Because one half times two would be one. So all that means is these two points right here that have an x value of one and negative one, they're going to move away from our y axis, okay? So they're actually gonna move to right here, okay? So they're gonna be stretched horizontally away from that x-axis or the y-axis. And our points at eight and negative eight, right? In order for us to get the cube root of eight, x here has to be 16, right? Because half of 16 is eight. So all that tells me is this point at eight two has to move all the way over to 16 two. The point down here at negative eight would have to move all the way over to negative 16 negative two, okay? So we're not gonna actually see those points right now, um, but we do have these three points that we can see. And notice how our portion in the middle here, uh, didn't draw that super well, but our, our portion in the middle here is less curvy, right? We've stretched it horizontally, so it's, it's getting straighter, um, but it's still not a linear function. All right, so in these last two examples, we are going to combine some transformations. So the first thing we notice is we have this plus two on the inside of our radical. So that's gonna tell us to translate two units left, okay? So I'm gonna move our points two units to the left. And our point over here at negative eight, negative two is gonna be off our graph, so we're not gonna focus on it right now. So now let's connect these. And there we go. And now we'll switch up our color. And this negative sign, can't really see that, let's go red, this negative sign here is going to tell us to reflect over the x axis, okay? So now these four points that we just shifted left to, let's now reflect over the x axis. So we'll go here, that point will stay on the x axis, and our final point will be right there, okay? So now when we go to connect these, let's see how well we can do this, not too bad. All right, so that would be our final graph for that function. All right, now let's look at B. We have m of x equals three times the cube root of x minus one, and then minus two on the outside. So the first thing I see here is this minus one. So we're going to translate one unit right. So we're gonna move these, these points one unit right. So we'll move all of them one right. And now let's draw our graph here. All right, not too bad. All right. Okay, now switch up our color and let's evaluate this three here. So now this is going to be a vertical stretch and this will be by a factor of three. So what that means is we're gonna take our four points there and we're gonna multiply their y values by three because we're going to stretch away from the x-axis. So this point was at negative two, so three, four, five, negative six will be here. This one was at negative one, so this will move to negative three. This one was at zero, it'll stay there. One will move to positive three. And now we can draw our graph. Okay. All right, and lastly, we have this minus two right here. So now this is gonna tell me to translate what I just did there in purple, um, two units down, okay? So now we got one, two, one, two, and one, two. Okay, so we'll go with these three points right here. All right, and that's what our final graph would look like, and that is how you graph cubic functions.